PM Board Bombs. Welcome to EM Board Bombs. I'm Dr. Wasiski. And I'm here with Dr. Briggs. And happy to have you guys here. For every short podcast, you know, we give you a whole bunch of learning pearls and we're happy to deliver them. How many? Mm, 10 to 20. This one's going to be just been tr- <laughs> totally full of learning pearls. Yes, yes. You can check us out at emboardbombs.com. We've got tons of podcasts, and, yeah. tons of study guides, uh, and we've got... Dr. Wasiski Kuhn and I are um, clearly post-shift today. We are dead, <laughs> brain dead. Not too brain dead to do some great teaching, though. Yes. Oh, that's good. That's good. Hey, uh, yeah, check out our website. We got our Rapid Bombs podcast. More on that later. But uh, let's just dive into this thing. Let's go. We got a lot of things to cover here. Let's dive into this podcast stem. Yeah. You got it. Yeah. So it's 3 a.m. and you're chatting with your nursing staff about your collection of Laboo-Boos. And everyone knows what those are, you know. Wait, what? The, what are Laboo-Boos? Just something that's super popular that everyone talks about and that you definitely know what they are. And I have lots of them at home. I think you know what they are, right? I have no idea what you're talking about. <laughs> I actually don't know what they are. But you're talking about them because you think you know what they are. And then all of a sudden you hear an EMS call. Wait, what, what, is, a, what is this? No, I literally don't know what they are. It's a doll, I think. So it's you're having one of those conversations at 3 a.m. where you're trying to keep up with the conversation by talking about your collection of Laboo-Boos. And then you're saved by the EMS call. And unfortunately, it's a three-year-old child that they're going to bring you. And the kid's in respiratory distress. And suddenly they're in your bay. and The three-year-old is lethargic, he's cyanotic, and he has really poor air movement on auscultation. So what is your next best step? Is it A, Uh, obtain a chest x-ray, B, administer nebulized albuterol, C, begin bag valve mask ventilation, or D, intubate immediately? Hey, we got to talk about EM rapid bombs first. Yeah, of course. EM rapid bombs. Man, what do we have to say about EM rapid bombs? Just unlimited amount of resources here. Over 500 episodes. Isn't that incredible? So many. Almost two years of content. Literally, if you listen to one episode a day, uh, for each two to four minute episode, amazing amount of content in terms of multiple choice questions, coaching, telling what's right or what's wrong on the test, as well as... Hey, what's in real life? What do you do? What on the test do you do? Sometimes some differences. What do you have to say about this? You passed your boards. Congratulations. I did. I passed my boards. It's incredible. That would have been awkward. Yeah, it would have been awkward. I want you to pass your boards. And this is how you can do it. Because it is so hard to just remember every little detail about every little thing because you yes. could be tested on so many little things. And so this is what we do. We tell you what you're going to be tested on. And that's how you study. Is All these you, little things. You know how you're going to be tested. And that's what yeah. EM Rapid Bombs is about. So, you know, go to emboardbombs.com. We'll link you to Rapid Bombs. You can check it out there. Look at some of the content. Like we said, tons and tons of episodes. You will not regret it. It's, one click. it's a great deal. It's a really good deal. For sure. All right. Hey, so what's the correct answer here? So the correct answer here is C. You're going to begin back valve mask ventilation Ooh, bvm yeah not the bvms hey so this is all about pals pals pal. I'm here with my pal, pal going over pals pals is your pal if yeah pal, if pals was so appropriately named <laughs> <laughs> so we're diving in here to just pediatric resuscitation and before we jump into respiratory cardiac arrest we should talk about the classic abcdes Yep. Why don't you delve into that when it comes to a child? Some of it's the same. Some of it is going to go out of order at times. It just depends on the situation. Yeah. So your your pediatric primary survey. So letters still stand for the same thing. So A is still for airway. Is it clear? Can you maintain it? B is still for breathing. What is the respiratory effort? You're looking for 
maybe some different things here. Cyanosis, remember to look for central cyanosis in your infants. They will naturally have acrocyanosis in their hands. So look, press their forehead. So look for central cyanosis. Look for grunting. That is a classic pediatric thing to look for. Nasal flaring. C still stands for circulation, heart rate, perfusion, pulses, cap refill. D, disability, mental status. Are they alert, verbal, pain, unresponsive? D, disability, like I said, is my favorite because of the pediatric GCS scale for an infant. Dr. Briggs, do you know how to grade an infant's verbal response? Actually not. I would love for you to teach me. So the verbal response on the pediatric or infant, rather, GCS. So you have, you know, your fully alert infant is cooing and babbling. And then Mm. you have some irritable crying. So you get one point off if you're irritably crying versus cooing and babbling. You know that infant that you have in the trauma bay that's cooing and babbling happy? Yes, yes. I can't yeah. imagine, you know, a surgery resident calling this out on the uh, primary survey <laughs> for the trauma attending. Yes. And then and then the trauma attending is going to, like, tell them, oh, it's not one point for cooing. <laughs> it's two points. It's two <laughs> points for crying in response to pain. This is clearly an irritable cry. <laughs> <laughs> just That's just. And then, and then, of course, there's what? Um, and then E, E is for exposure. E, exposure. So, the same. <laughs> yeah, undress the child. Look for trauma. Right. Definitely always right. look for trauma in pediatrics. Right. Petechiae, rashes. Those are other things you got to always have an eye out for in kids. So right. here's the pearl is that in PALS, you want to try to categorize early. Is it respiratory distress? Is it respiratory failure? Is it shock? Is it arrest? Hopefully you were able to tell if this was arrest, but you got to categorize that now because this is going to set your whole trajectory. Yes. And that's what brings us to respiratory emergencies. Yeah. And that is the difference really between an adult and a child is that respiratory distress versus failure is so important, right? Versus asthmatics versus severe COPD, right? Mm Mm-hmm. Some patients are going to come in with the potential, the high potential of being reversed versus the very low potential of being reversed, so they just need to be intubated. Yeah. So distress is going to be working hard and failure is giving up. So if they're tachypneic or retracting or grunting but awake, that's distress. Now, if they're lethargic, that means they've really lost that ability to work with breathing. They could be hypoxic, and that's a huge red flag, especially in asthmatic, anytime they're hypoxic. Despite oxygen too, or bradypneic, that's a t- that's a tough word to say. That sometimes. is a hard word. Couldn't say that. No, Bill would not be able to say that. <laughs> that's failure. And so, what's your move in this case? Well, it's the answer to the question. It's the baggy valve mask. That's the first thing you're reaching for. And so often in medicine, we downplay the importance of ventilations, BVMs. We always think, oh, they need an airway. Oh, they need BiPAP. Well, BVM sometimes is what you need in that moment. And we should all be trained to do really, really good BVMs. Especially if you're a resident or a student, you should get this skill down early because it can really save patients' mm-hmm. lives. For sure. So, yeah, don't rush to intubate unless your B- no. you know that your BVM is not cutting it. You need to give this a good, right. a good solid college try. <laughs> Speaking of things that may have failed, so things fail, and now you are at a cardiac arrest. So right. We're going to talk about that a little bit. So your PALS algorithm for cardiac arrest, we're going to cover both basic and advanced together here. So it's 3 a.m., of course, so things are going to get worse, but at least you're not talking about Lububus anymore. <laughs> um, so it's it's now a pulseless child. So what's, what's the first thing you're going to do? This is not a trick question. Yeah, obviously it's CPR. <laughs> yes. Yes. Start compressions. <laughs> yes. Always. I and hope, don't wait. Yeah. Don't ask someone else to do it. No, you're doing it. You're doing it. I hope you didn't have to think about that. Um, PALS is CAB, not ABC. So circulation comes first. That's why you're starting compressions. Your rate here is 100 to 120. Your depth is a third of the chest. So that's about 1.5 inches for infants, two inches for kids. The classic, you know, switch every two minutes, et cetera. Those things are pretty much the same. Um, 
and the rhythms in a rest are essentially the same for a, as they are for adults, what you can and can't shock. So Dr. Briggs loves electricity. What can you shock? Love it. Love it. Obviously, it's the same thing as in the adults. Any V-fib or pulseless VTAC, that is what you're shocking, same as adults. Mm -hmm. Rules don't change here. Yeah. The one thing that does change, energy. So your first shock. Energy. Yeah. Your first shock dose, two joules per keg. Your second shock dose is four joules per keg. Your max is going to be 10 joules per keg or the adult dose if you get there. So Correct. Your meds, again, the med itself does not change, just the dose. So 0 0.01 mg per keg IV every three to five minutes. And again, that's one to 10,000 dosing. So just a note here, pediatric dosing is difficult for all of us because we're not mathematicians and you may not have a pharmacist there. You're I a PhD though. Does that mean you basically know math? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> For sure. How often do you use that on your patients, by the way? How often do you tell them your PhD? Um, only if I really want them to believe me when I'm telling them about something neurological. Uh, trust me, I'm not one of those doctors. I'm a PhD. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Go get them. And they ask you what you majored in, and you're like, well, that's a long story. That's what, Yeah, that's why it's only like if I really want them to believe me about neurological yes, stuff. Yes, that's a long story. <laughs> Not math. Were you going to say about Epi? Were you going to um, say something? Yeah, I was going to say about something math related. <laughs> math, math related. So if you get yeah. if you get an EMS pre notification and you have any information about the child, prep your dosages. So, you know, if you can write down your dosages for energy, for Epi, for atropine, for any of the things that you might use. Um, yeah. RSI meds, just have them written down already so that you don't have to do math, so that nobody has to do math. Because in reality, you want everyone to be working on actual things like compressions, getting totally. access, getting equipment, okay. doing BVM. Uh, and you want, you don't want someone sitting in the corner like doing math on their phone yes. or yes. anything like that. So, yeah. right. Just have that ready. Right. Thank you. And sometimes you don't have the weight ready use of Breslow tape or other methods, but having those meds ready to go is, is perfect. Mm -hmm. So, hey, remember if you're intubating also, same as adults, same as adults. The intubation should never, ever trump compressions, meaning that you're never pausing compressions for more than five to 10 seconds. I know like the, I think the book says like 10 seconds or something. And by the book, I mean some sources we found online. But I would say more than like five. Like it's crazy how the drop is an end title if you pause compressions. Yeah. Especially yeah. in kids, for sure. Oh, it's awful. Yeah. Yeah. If you're pausing yeah. and you see and your end title drop before that time, just restart. I mean, just give it up. That's really yeah, restart. Yeah. Do some BBM. Yeah. Do some BBM. Hey, delve into this thing with bradycardia with or perfusion with kids. So unstable bradycardia. Yeah. Basically. So bradycardia is so much scarier in kids than it is Absolutely. in adults. For me, definitely, it should be for you yep. too. So bradycardia kills kids if. A kid's heart rate is slow and they look sick. This is going to be hypoxia until it's proven otherwise. Mm -hmm. So if they are bradycardic Heart and they are unstable in any way, maintain the airway, support breathing, start BVM with 100% oxygen immediately. If the heart rate stays below 60 despite oxygenation and ventilation, start CPR and give epinephrine. The dose is going to be the same as in a rest, the 0 0.01 mg per kg IV. And you can consider atropine for any kind of vagal bradycardia, 0 0.02 mg per kg with a max dose of, or with a minimum dose of 0 0.1 milligrams, a maximum dose of 0 0.5 milligrams. Now, tachycardia is actually the opposite. It's not as concerning. Now, only until it gets really fast. Yeah. <laughs> so it's just like you always should. Every kid with that cardio, you're doing an EKG and some of the bradycardia also. Looking at the QRS width, is it narrow? Is it wide? If it's narrow, fast, with poor perfusion, it is very likely an SVT. SVT is by far the most common reason children will have some type of essentially tachycardia other than sinus. So SVT is the most common. Now, if the, if the child is unstable by any means, it's the same rules apply 
as adults, which is what you're going to suck them. Um, exactly right. And cardioversion is your move there. And the dose is going to be about one joule per kilogram. You can go up to two. It's the same as your pulseless child. Stable SVT, this is where you're really going to try vagal maneuvers. And actually, these work a lot better in kids than in adults. And by that, we talk about this quick method of what is your favorite vagal maneuver for infants? I like to dip them. the parents. Dip them, yeah. Dipping is good. I've seen some attendings literally get a bag of ice and just like shove it in the child's face. <laughs> It's another one. Karate massage is an option too. Um, those are the two big ones, the dip, the ice. Yeah. Because obviously they can't cooperate. You know, the adults, we always talk about that modified Valsalva maneuver, syringe, legs up. And that's about like 40% effectiveness. I feel like that's always debated every few years. But the infants actually respond really well. Are you are you telling me the dipping. you can't get a six-month-old to blow in a syringe? <laughs> With legs up? Really? That's, Wow. Exactly. Exactly. So what are your doses here, Adenison? Oh, yeah. All these so, memorized doses. Yeah. 0 0.1 mix per keg, rapid push. Again, the same way with the stopcock or the two syringe, whatever you have your setup as. Max right. max six milligrams, second dose, 0 0.2 mix per keg, max 12 milligrams, the same max as you have with adults. Right. Same max. It's perfect. Awesome. Mm -hmm. uh, why complex tachycardia is most commonly going to be VTAC, yeah. just like adults. Mm -hmm. Always assume it's VTAC. We've talked about this in other podcasts. I've written articles about it. So have you. Everyone has talked about this countless times. Yeah. That whenever you have Y-complex tachycardia, assume it's VTAC. Literally had this episode the other night. A person comes in. Someone asks him, what's your cardiac history? And he says, it's bad. <laughs> <laughs> and he has Y-complex rhythm. And of course, you know, one of the emergency doctors there says, oh, I'm going to treat this as VTAC. Cardiology comes down and says, oh, this looks like a variancy. And sure enough, five hours later, it's VTAC. You know, it's just... It's so silly to ever assume it's a barency. Stay tuned with the barency. So always assume it is VTAC. If unstable, you're shocking it just like every VTAC. If stable, maybe procainamide, maybe in order, amiodarone, whatever. Hopefully that's way out of your hands. Yeah. And it, what is, you know, we've talked about all these tachycardias, but by far, like 90 something percent of the time, tachycardia in a child is sinus tech. Yeah. So what what do you say about this? How do you even address this? I mean, besides addressing the underlying like, cause. Yeah, so kids kids tolerate sinus tachycardia so well. You know, yes. in infants up to two twenty is not abnormal, no. and in kids up to one eighty is not abnormal. Yeah, you know, don't don't, don't freak out. Do not give them metoprolol, please. Oh my god, yeah. one of the scariest things yes. that I saw in residency was an unnamed service attending pushing metoprolol right. on a 14 year old kid who had sinus tachycardia to the 150s because they were like oh my god it's too fast oh my gosh <laughs> i was so upset not good yeah do, do, don't take away their ability nope. to compensate just because you're used to the adult numbers yeah definitely don't hey let's wrap this up why don't you give us some high yield summary here Yes. Six major points yes. to take away here when it comes to pals. Right. High yields, right. but it's not groundbreaking. Okay. So start with your primary survey. Know your ABCDEs. Respiratory failure. BVM before tubes. Cardiac arrest. It's CAB, compressions, airway, breathing. Your shockable rhythms are VTAC and if it's pulseless and VFib. Bradycardia with poor perfusion, oxygen, CPR, epi, and then tachycardia. If it's unstable, shock. If it's stable, meds. Like I said, nothing. Pretty much similar to adults. Yeah, that's awesome. Just they're just little adults. <laughs> in this case, <laughs> pretty much. In this case, they are. Yeah. And just as I incite all the pediatric rage <laughs> online, and, it'll be like uh, a whole Reddit page devoted to us now. So crashing kids, stay calm and stay calm. someone tell me what a lubuhu is because I'm not going to look it up. Someone's going to write to us about that too. <laughs> hey, remember Ian Rapid Bombs? Go to ianboardbombs.com and uh, hey, we'll catch you next time. <laughs> <laughs>